So you were speaking earlier uh, about some of the issues with the Zika virus and uh, malaria that's resistant to uh, a lot of antibiotics and other drugs um, as sort of a way that uh, um, something that unifies people behind uh, some of the genetic modification. Um, but I was kind of curious about uh, something such as golden rice, uh, where we see like widespread beneficial impact of, of this uh, possible um, variety of rice. And uh, you still see a lot of groups such as Greenpeace uh, like vehemently uh, against these sorts of things. So uh, in the problem of like kind of implementing these, uh, this technology, um, are we looking at like a vocal minority that, that we need to like out lobby or something like that? Is this an issue I think maybe about um, universities not being able to uh, go to governments or, or consumers with information as readily as uh, organizations that you know aren't governed in the same way that we are. So I'm kind of curious, like how do you see us changing the minds of not just consumers, who I think are probably a little bit uh, easier to, to reach, but, but the people who are really like affecting change uh, policy-wise on these issues. I want to. I want to just say. Um, it sounds like you think golden rice is a product. No, no, no. no. You so know, it's, it's never. It's, it's there is no golden rice. You know that, right? It doesn't exist as a product on the market. It, nobody is eating golden rice yeah. anywhere in the world, right? You yeah. Know that. Okay. So why hasn't it gone out? You mean? Yeah. Many reasons, probably. I mean, I know some reasons, but I think you're, my, 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 my thought is that there's been a lot of attempt on the part of many people on all sides of this argument, on all sides of the fence, to reach policymakers and to discuss at, in a logical, scientific way. And I actually agree with Jim. I think the fundamental reason that the scientific arguments, the logical, the rational, don't necessarily convince is because the objections are not uh, logical, rational, or scientifically based. So you cannot counteract them with those kinds of arguments. I have, I, I have an understanding that actually many, I don't know if this is true, but I think many, um, having talked to many people, I think many people have a deep-seated understanding that uh, comes from Judeo-Christian beliefs that the world was made in God's image and any changes are against the law of God. And that's why I think evolution is not taught in some schools. It's the same fundamental clash of some very, very, very basic belief systems. It's not reachable by science or by logic. So I, I actually believe that that's underlying a lot of the resistance, and it's not something that a policymaker can change. It's not something a university class can change. It's something that people, um, maybe the reason people change is because they're confronted by a greater evil and it forces them to reconsider their belief systems sometimes. But as long as you can hold on to your belief system, I know there's a fundamental deep, deep-seated belief system that probably each of us has. We will defend it to the death. And I think that's, the, that's actually where, you know, when Copernicus or any of the, the great discoveries in science that, that the Earth revolves around the sun, things don't revolve around us, anything that takes us out of the center is somehow very threatening. So I actually believe it's at that level, and that's why um, it, it doesn't follow a linear course. 